In September of 1941, a special people's commissariat for the tank industry was formed. The rapid advance of the German army made the Soviet leadership look for new sites for the tank factories and other plants in the Ural Mountains. Regarding the formation of the big three tank plants in Chelyabinsk, Nizhny Tagil and Sverdlovsk, there is plenty of evidence of the unsatisfactory course of evacuation in the fall of 1941. By January of 1942, approximately 28,000 people arrived at the plants. 8,000 of them were placed in the cities, 16,000 in factory buildings, and another 4,000 people at evacuation centers in trade schools and factory clubs. Living conditions were incredibly difficult, but all domestic problems in those days faded into the background, the main concern of all those who worked in the factory were tanks. During 1942 the production of heavy tanks increased five times. This was achieved due to an increase in average monthly output per worker, but there was a catastrophic lack of labor force. According to the plan for the first quarter of 1942, about 40,000 people were supposed to work in the workshops of the plants, but in reality there were only 28,000 of them. To fill the personal shortage, women and teenage children were involved in the work. What were the living conditions of these factory workers? At first it was barracks with bunk beds for 30 or 40 families, fenced with bales and sheets. Later nearby villages were settled, the conditions in which were no better. The barracks were dilapidated without running water, broken glass in dugouts. 10 to 12 people lived in an area of 10 square meters. Typical complaint of one of the employees were In the evening, in our damned village, there is no way to go anywhere. It's dark around. Going into a city or club is far and dangerous. Hooligan gangs around a lot. By 1942, over 10% of the Soviet workforce was under 18. The official working hours for children was at most 6 hours per day, for adults 10 to 12 hours, but the actual was 16 hours per day for everybody. Food was rationed upwards from 250 grams for workers, but the norms how much food one was entitled to depended on the personal productivity. For example, completing daily tasks below 80%, the worker was entitled to 550 grams of bread, below 100% 600 grams, and up to 120% 700 grams of bread. Other ration products included salt, potatoes, tea, sugar, meat, meat products and fish. But not all ration products were always available at the distribution points though, and one could not get a double portion the next day to compensate for the missed food. If a product was not rationed, it meant that it was only available commercially at the exorbitant market prices. But finally, the Ural tanks won in a duel with the tanks of the German army thanks to the dedicated work of the workers, the engineering skills and the technologists of the Soviet tank factories. But their heroic efforts, the plants in the shortest possible time reached an unprecedented rate of production of combat vehicles. During the war, for example in Chelyabinsk, 13 models of tanks and self-propelled artillery systems were produced. A total of 18,000 combat vehicles, 
48,000 tanks and 85,000 sets of fuel equipment, 16.5 million ammunition preparations and many other weapons.